Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Emily here from EasyBib.com and welcome to my first ever super and hopefully awesome video blog post. The purpose of these video blogs is to go over some of the top stories that we've been reading about in EdTech and library land that we think would also be pretty relevant to you guys. In case you missed it, the State of the Union was a couple weeks ago, and while Joe Biden was seemingly distracted during a couple different points during the address, most of the nation was paying attention. President Barack Obama had lots of interesting things to share, some of which were particularly interesting for libraries. One of the promises that Obama made during the State of the Union was that he wants to bring high-speed internet access to 20 million students in 15,000 schools across the country. As a result of this promise, the FCC has now doubled the amount of money that it's funneling into high-speed internet access. The ultimate goal with this is to bring internet speeds of 100 megabits per second to all schools in the United States by 2015. With many low-income families in the United States not having broadband internet access at home, bringing high-speed internet to schools means bringing high-speed internet to libraries, in turn bolstering the importance of the library as an imperative school and community resource. If you watch the State of the Union, you may have also caught on to the emphasis on preschool education. And as someone who's living in New York City, I've been hearing about that a lot lately. With an increased focus on preschool education and potential state and federal funding going towards it, this is an ideal opportunity for librarians to showcase their experiences with early childhood education programming. While we can only speculate what John Boehner must have been thinking about during the entire State of the Union, it is clear that there are some opportunities for libraries to tout their importance in the coming year. Another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the latest list to come out from YALSA, the Young Adult Library Services Association. Every few years they put together these different lists of outstanding books for college-bound students, and they just came out with their latest one a couple weeks ago. The latest installment includes suggestions in different discipline areas, including things like arts and humanities, social sciences, history and culture, language arts, and science and technology. With so many suggested books in so many different subject areas, K-12 librarians can use these lists as a way to build out or even refine their collection or to make suggestions for college-bound seniors. Academic librarians could even use this list as a way to build out a reading list of sorts for undecided freshmen. The reading list includes authors like Tina Fey, Nate Silver, Mary Roach, and Bill Bryson, so chances are students have either read them already in class, or they've seen them interviewed on The Daily Show, or they've just heard about them in pop culture. Yals has done a really great job putting this comprehensive list together, so make sure to check it out at the link below. I read this really interesting article on my way into work yesterday, and I wanted to talk to you guys about it to see what you think. As a librarian and a general functioning human being, I use Wikipedia a lot. It's sort of become this ubiquitous entity in our lives, and whether we like it or not, students are using it in some sort of capacity with their learning. The New York Times article talked about how more and more people are migrating over to mobile-based web browsing experiences, and how different websites have been trying to figure out how to keep their users coming back to them. The problem with Wikipedia, though, is a little bit different, because not only do they need to be able to maintain traffic to their website through mobile devices, but they also need to make sure that people are continuing to edit the content on it, since it's entirely user-generated. If people aren't editing content on Wikipedia, not to say that it will cease to exist, but the quality of it will become probably even more questionable. When it comes to browsing the web on mobile devices, it's pretty clear that it's more about consuming than it is about creating. Wikipedia released an editing-friendly mobile version of their website last July, but they've only had about 200,000 edits since then. How do you think the mobile migration is going to impact Wikipedia and how frequently its entries are edited? Tell us in the comments or shoot me a message on Twitter. I'm at Emily underscore EasyBit. Well, this seems as good a time as any to wrap up because the markers are pretty much entirely out of ink and I think I've been rambling on long enough. If you're still watching, thank you for sticking with me through my very first video blog. I hope you guys found it informative, and until next time, you can always find me on Twitter, I'm at Emily underscore EasyBit.